This is hilarious. Here, Charles and I plotting and scheming any fun stuff here, but here we go, we would friends. Never. Oh, we have in the past, and we will again as we get now to our final series of the day. The Dallas Empire taking on the Florida Mutineers, and this should be a fun one. Again, we're here at the Dallas Home Series. A beautiful shot there of Dallas, of downtown Dallas, where a 12,000 square foot uh, facility is in there somewhere, where the boys from Dallas themselves will be playing. My name is Miles, his name is Chance, and we're very, very keen to get into this one. The last match of the day, the first one was a blinder. Next one should be fun. Chance, quick thoughts? Quick thoughts. I mean, look, if you're trying to invest in, you need to make sure you diversify your portfolio. I know crypto has been like big on everybody's minds, but like, don't be afraid of the foreign markets, you know, like get out there, try to learn a little bit more, Moss. It's good for the, uh, the old bankroll. Yeah, quick thoughts there from Chance. Again, quick thoughts can be anything you want here, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't specify you yes. got to pay attention at all times. But now, let's get straight into this series. Let's just go for it. We're diving in feet first to this one. There are our home series hosts, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Empire. And we cannot wait to get this series underway. For the Dallas Empire, again, fellow, the latest addition to this squad. And I can't wait, brother. Let's meet the team. Chatsy, Prim, Ellie, fellow. And uh, with, with fellow on the roster now, Krim's doing what he can to, you know, to, to bolster up the team. Illy and Shotzi running those subs, getting themselves a little more comfortable day by day as a pair. But I do not doubt, Chance, this squad has got a high ceiling. Miles, I also got thrown off by the fact that there is no video this time, but this is definitely not a team that was lacking in leadership, right? Like, Krim has that in spades, obviously with the coaching staff as well. They just lack some unknown element that I don't know if anyone has quite figured out other than the Dallas Empire camp, right? The, the roster move they made, obviously one of the most criticized decisions we have seen in Call of Duty, but obviously the people that are working for the Dallas Empire camp, some of the finest minds in Call of Duty history, so I think it's about the, the development that that we see from this team the progress that they are able to make and maybe see what kind of leadership that they have can make this team work yes those in-game decisions we're seeing from dallas that are really making the difference they're for opponents though another squad that's made a bit of a recent change and they're trying to find that form trying to get those stormy seas all sweet and foamy so they can have a nice time ladies and gentlemen it's now time to meet the florida mutineers Dictionary defines redemption as the deliverance of persons or things from the possession and power of captors. It is a 3 victory over the Florida Mutineers. As the act of making something better. As the act of making up for a loss. It is over. And that is a, a shocker for the Mutineers. We define it as inevitable. Count our KD. You can count our headshots. You can count our hill time. What you can't do is count us out. There it is, the Florida Mutineers chance. And again, for this team, a, a win would be great. We're trying to find that form going into this major, which would be ideal for making that go for that big old run through the bracket. But awakening these guys, Havoc Neptune. How are you feeling about their chances today against Dallas? I, it's a it's a tough call for this team, right? Consistency has been an issue, even with the roster change. There's some positive takeaways, but it certainly has not been like the, the magic bullet sort of cure for the team. So we're still awaiting the panacea for their problems, see if they can figure it out. But I would say, honestly, in terms of stage three, pretty much a must win. I think they're one and two, one and three in the standings right now. If there's any hope of getting to the winner's bracket, I think they need tiebreakers to go this way and they need to win this series. If those tiebreakers go this way. We're going to cut our game fuel keys to victory now. We're going to be talking about Florida first, my friend. What have you got to bring to the table for Florida's success here in this series? I'm looking at more production out of Havoc, just like as a straight up one for one from a player. He is yet to go positive on a single respawn. I think he's got like a 0.76 overall KD. And admittedly, it's only three series in. It is an incredibly small sample size, but they're just moments. We're running around the map. They just don't seem like uh, the most well-oiled machine of a team. 
And then for the comps, for like the second point of where they need to find consistency, they've had like one series where they win both the hard points and then like lose the surges or like the controls. Then they have another series where they can't win a hard point, get bullied out. They're just sort of all over the place. And Miles, I don't know if you remember the listening we heard from these guys on like the, the Moscow hard point from their previous series, but it was scattered, a couple mute players. It wasn't super efficient. So I'm looking for them to clean it up and find their footing in the league and be a little bit more consistent. If Florida can fix up, look sharp going into this series against Dallas. And again, we talk about Dallas chance. Let's get the game field keys to victory for the Empire squad. What are you looking to see out of them today? In my mind, this is a, a mirror match of a series. It's the exact same thing, just about. <laughs> I'm looking for more production out of Fellow. He's the new guy on the team, and especially if you're running an AR the majority of the time, going negative at times can be unacceptable. Admittedly, incredibly small sample size. They've only played two series, one of which was against Toronto. So it's understandable to have these like struggles early on, but I think Fellow really needs to start kicking it up. Florida is one of the, the better teams, I'd say, for him to really try to showcase his skills. And then for the second point, well, they are phenomenal on checkmate control. They're 5-0, and oh, but the other control maps, not so much. They're negative on both of them. They need to find at least that second map where they can have that consistent uh, wins. Or if Florida just lets the checkmate through, then you're good to go because you're undefeated on the map. So maybe Dallas won't have any problems there. Yeah, we see the maps and modes here. Moscow hardpoint to start things off. We're going to a Dallas favorite in Express S&D. Checkmate control after that. And if we have to go all the way, we're going to get that checkmate S&D game five. Fun to see that one, and everyone loves a bit of raid hardpoint. Let's quite face that one. But hey, we go, friends. That's going to be our maps and modes. You've met our teams. We're almost ready to get into this one. Our first map of the final match today here in the Dallas home series. Avex going to get his hair in order. A lot of hair, man. Headphones are on. Use them like a what is a hair tie almost. As we are ready now to dive into this game. Chance we're going to Moscow. Hope everyone brought an umbrella because it is still raining. Many, many months on. It's yet to change season probably freezing cold there as well but moscow hardpoint coming up first any quick calls here mate what do you think again you you, you touched briefly upon florida's most recent performance on this map the comms were a little bit iffy but i think dallas are looking squeaky clean here otherwise I would honestly expect them to have a squeaky clean performance. I really would, unless Florida has made some great strides in the past week that they have had. I mean, again, I'm doing this off memory, so I'm certainly gonna be at least a little bit incorrect, but I think Florida last time they played it, lost by like 90, 100 points on Moscow. And then again, the comms just weren't great. I think we caught them halfway through the game. And again, a couple players just super quiet. I think Skies was like trying to direct the action as much as he could, but. They just faltered a little bit on the communication side of things, so gonna have to clean that up massively if you have any hope of beating Dallas, but Shotzi able to get that first blood. Oh, things off with a bang. The contest is gonna be there for a brief moment. Havoc's gonna flank through, and oof, it's going back and forth. Havoc gets two before being taken down there, and it's a big win as far as we're concerned. And Ellie finally getting himself on the board, starting things off nicely. We're gonna get another one here as the contest is there. Man, he is sliding. There are Semtex everywhere. Ears will be ringing, the beeping of Semtex is all over the place. It is true pandemonium here on point. Once again, Havoc on that flank, looking to flood these players up hard point, trying to maximize that time here on first. And Awakening, he's going to do what he does, find himself too. You've still got map control going the way of the Florida Mutineers. And you get the most amount of time from that first point, but I'll try to pick up a scrap here or there on the way out. Havoc apparently has one play in the P1 playbook, but it's an effective one at that, right? Two for two for the flanks through gold. And uh, again, right now for Florida, this is all just about keeping the Dallas Empire at bay. But there's Fellow picking up two in the feed. That's going to open up the street. But more importantly, White was already opened up. Florida might have technically had the early rotation, but they have zero map control in Dallas Empire. Walk on through, try to get the police control, and they are successful at that. Illy able to get up top. Dallas, they flip the spawns. Oh, this could hurt. Illy, oh man, he's in position takes trim down sadly with that early semtex throw but he is locking this one down trophy cabinet there in the top side of pd is our current reigning world champs hold this one down 25 seconds remaining here they should be able to get it awakening trying to come through front rotation's already underway florida looking towards the next one not been tremendously productive for either team here obviously dallas with a bit of a lead but first and second hard points a real war waged there third coming up now chance that's a decent spread here from florida on the defense and you see the idea right now, maybe the middle of the map open just a little bit, but Neptune effectively is going to get that responsibility there, uh, allowing the flank to come through with no eyes on it because Havoc again just playing an off angle. 
certainly has some of this information, even if they get past him. Keep in mind, Skies is sitting in the back, but the push is coming through elbow. Trade's coming through. Skies win his ones, though. Dallas Empire, at least for their first push, is going to get stuffed, and Havoc finds his kill as well. The perfect and clean four down from Florida, working on the comeback in this game. And what a battle that was. Havoc and Shotzi, they do sadly take each other out in one way or another, but at least straight back to the point. Awakening. Ow. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> he just walked right on through. He slipped the net. Amazing timing. Still, Neptune in skies, bringing those Kriegs to the front line, holding these members of Dallas back. Havoc takes care of Fellow, trying to check in at the hotel. Over the boulevard. Another kill going his way as well. Eight and five overall for Havoc. Route man gets paid. He has managed to find his way across the map very comfortably. Nice dip dive out. Three in a row now. A couple more players making their way through the center of the map. He's doing a good job. Locking this place down alone. Neptune was there for a brief spell. Kill number four. Goes through for Havoc again. Man, he's having a great time here by statue. Back and forth. Keeping Dallas very much off balance. And he just did a fantastic job of slowing these oh. players down. Unfortunately, might have slowed them down, but the trades don't come through, at least not initially. And it looks like at least that, that gold control is going to be in the hands of Dallas Empire. And honestly, Crim6 causing a bit of problems. Look how far around Havoc just had to go just to take down Crim. And over time, the actual point, Shati just picking Ooh. up two pieces with the nade. The actual pressure on street is fully in their control. And all of this started with Havoc picking up, what, three or four kills on the go-round, doing the perfect job in Florida. Get absolutely nothing off of it. And even for Dallas long-term, they're even spawning on the side of the map that they want. Maybe Havoc can be the route man once again. He might be able to take a long route and go all the way around the map. But even still, I'd say for Florida, you know, being down by 15, 20 points, they had a, a couple of opportunities. Maybe flip the score in their favor. But say la vie, here we go. And keep in mind, Havoc did get found. He did get found. Well, Dallas Empire they're looking quite cool, calm, and collected here in the game. I wonder if the comms are the same. Let's go for a quick Astro Gaming listen in with Dallas Empire. No, no, I, I think I killed No, one more. They might be going tree. Yeah, yeah, I spawned tree. Do you have a taxi? I got one taxi. They're flash gold. Bench, bench, guys. Right corner. I need a Guys, right corner gold. One taxi's at me. One went pillar awakening. Guys, I'm on shot. Yeah, yeah, they're hitting They're hitting They're hitting Really, we can't. Guys, I spawned. Guys, guys, you Behind me, Pichu. Behind me, Pichu. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. Uh, Let's play, yeah. Get a time, get a time, go street. street. We're good. Platt's I, I need a plat, I need a plat. Yeah, I have streaks here. Okay. You have streaks now? Yeah, I have streaks. He's not on plat, he's not on plat. I'm one streaks. Or I only have a... Uh, yeah, I'm staring, I'm staring at closet. I'm in, I'm in. Yo, yo, rug, rug, yeah, rug, yeah. rug, 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 Top ED, top ED, yeah, top ED, top ED, watch out. No, in the back, back ED. One shot on the back, awakening. Hit off the back, hit off the back, net. Back, yeah, top ED and then back steps. Yeah, yeah. I think I backed up. Back steps. Yeah, I backed up something. Back, behind you, behind you, behind you. Oh, I had to reload, fuck. We're good. No one's been map. Yeah, you can streak this one, eh? I spawned deep. Uh, you might want it, you might want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's back tree on me. I'll come. Wait, middle border. Back tree down. Yeah, yeah, two guys, let's go fly. Yeah, yeah, mid, uh, fly, fly, and then on time. Where'd he go? Bottom PD. Yeah, they're gonna spawn bottom PD. Bottom PD. I got one in L. Yo, right there. Yo, good shit, good shit. Oh, yo, back steps. I can't see him. So there. Guy's dead. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Andrew, there's a trip. Did they spawn old or did they spawn? Oh, they spawn street. They spawn globe. Spawn globe. Yeah, I'm coming to back with you. I'm gonna try to hide in the back. I'm gonna try to go in the corner already. In the drive, I've seen Chance. It's just so strong right now, man. I mean, it's great out of Dallas. We saw Shotzi go on a run. Fellow's on one now. Empire looking fantastic. I don't even know if it's great out of Dallas. I think it's literally just great out of Shotzi to go on the 8 spree. Because keep in mind, even on the rotation, Havoc actually, again, the route man, makes the play once again, finds the kills in the back, and gets floored to those spawns early on. So that's a foot race Dallas should have won. Now they're forced to use the streaks. The good thing is the streaks are effective. Shotzi able to find two, walks straight in towards the hill. And, well, now you know the gunfights you're going to have to deal with, right? Everyone's going to be flooding in through the back. And Shotzi, well, just playing with this food. Found one more kill before he falls in the trades eventually are there but even still i suppose just making the best of the bad situation dallas off of the streaks able to hold this hill from the front from the front indeed and it's shotsy once again coming out on top of the final kills there trades back and forth dallas 150 points now across 15 seconds remaining on this point and we are going to roll over towards next soon we've already got the members of florida in position for this one neptune's something's tingling he knows they're around him he's got no idea about fellow though crim for sure 
Now the red dots are out and about. Neptune springs into action, sadly. And he finds one before going down. And Havoc find anything here. Big nade from Fellow, a massive win from that position. There's a couple more players here. We're gonna go back and forth. Boulevard, it's a tough hard point to find the kills. Trust in your teammates, essential. And Krim, the rest of the ARs of Dallas Empire now marching forward, trying to land the damage. Perchance we do have Florida in control. Florida in control, and this is big time for them to get as well, right? You're down by quite a bit, and frankly, at some point, you're gonna wanna burn that cruise missile of Shotzi, but that almost certainly is gonna come into effect either on the next P2 or the next P3, the nice and open hills. For the moment, Neptune putting in some decent work inside of that gold window. Trying to slow these players down, and for Dallas, I think they know it. They're chalking it up and rotating over towards new. Shotzi, this is the, the place where he started his eighth spree the last time around, right? Caught up players that was trying to push through Eskies, and he turned that into an eight spree. Back in position once again. This time it's Neptune he has to deal with, and actually they've sent two. They don't want to deal with Shotzi again, so Neptune and Havoc working together, take him down, and get at least three kills. Fell the last one inside the hill. Florida get all four. Gets somewhat of a clean break. Admittedly, they're trying to flip spawns again, but Illy with the reads. Here comes Havoc. Every single time, <laughs> you're like, here comes Havoc. He's on the flanks. There's no doubt about it. Great stuff out of Illy so far. Big shots. Here comes the contest on the hard point. And it's a nice kill spree there from the members of Florida meeting is. It's going to be two for Awakening now, two for Neptune. This guy has managed to get on the board. Huge. That was huge. What a break that was. You still have got control of the back as well. This is a good look for Florida. How long can they hold on though? That's the question. Oh, for the moment, pretty good. Awakening starting to get a little bit hot. He's on a four spree, but I would say for Dallas, I mean, maybe one or two mistakes in this game, but the one they just made may be more costly than the rest. Uh, again, they still have the, the cruise missile potentially for the Ooh. bailout, but that is a 60 point lead that they have tossed away. And now in this rotation, Sky's towards the back. Pressure on for him to win a couple gunfights or at least just the first, and he is successful. Oh. Now for Shotzi, well, he's dead for the moment. He might have to call on the crews, but if everyone's flooding in through white, I mean, Skies, this is prime territory for him to find all of the kills. Oh, he's going to land on having it does. Just take care of the player by half wall. Now is an opportunity to move in for Dallas. Still spawns close there for, Flor for yeah, the Mutineers. Are still coming out the back PD. Shotzi's having to deal with these players on the front line as well. Timing's just a little bit off. Good stuff. As again, the Florida, they will hold this one. Crim's gonna get pushed back. Big shots, not enough to get the job done. And this has been a magnificent turnaround for the Mutineers. They're gonna get this rest of this time, no questions asked, except for maybe Crim, if he can do some shenanigans, but already the rotation's down. This is a big 1v1 win for the time on the right-hand side of the map. And Skies is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Crim. The fight was a long one. Skies manages to soak up that time. Dallas still have the rotation. How will Mutineers break it? Here they come through the middle of the map. Illy's trying to slow him down. And I like this from Krim, by the way. As soon as he got that kill on Skies, he just leaves. He's trying to win the foot race. Now Krim actually setting up a flank. But while he's trying to flank, the rest of his teammates are actually falling on the other side. He gets sniffed out on the flank and oh. fell him now by himself. Florida, the cleanest break you're ever going to see. They get through in Neptune, by the way. He's on a five and well, Florida, for the first time in what seemed like this entire game, have taken the lead. If they're holding this hill from the front, I mean, these final 35 seconds, if they go towards the way of Florida, the game is pretty much just going to be there. So Dallas, they're taking one more crack. Whoa, it streaks now. The Neptune, it's a seven spree for him, man. This is back and forth. And we're going to call the artillery in straight away. Soften these players up on the approach from Eskies. And that could land good. Here it comes. It's going to take care of Fellow and Nilly as well. Great usage of the streaks. Very quick decision there. And Crim's now having to chalk this one up. Go over to the boulevard. Mutineers, the next 10 will be theirs. And with that, Boulevard could be a big one chance, but it has not been historically a good hard point for them on this map. They'll turn this ship around real quick. 30 points for the win. 30 points for the win and one more kill for the cruise missile. Maybe not necessary if they can just win it here because Florida, well, the hill control is going to be their way. Neptune still roaming around goal. You know, the call was to find Shotzi, but Shotzi wins the ones inside the hill, though, with Skies. He can't quite finish the second, but he's able to stay alive, at least for just a moment. Dallas now, everyone trying to flood in through the street as Shotzi still just roaming in that rad room. And look at the game clock. There is 18 seconds remaining. This is so tremendous. Havoc wins a big one on point. 30 seconds remaining here for Dallas. They can hold this time. But if you get them off the point and the game clock starts ticking down as it does for a few moments there, this could go the way of Florida as well. Bello finds himself a nice two. He's shot down. Final 10 now. You've just got to keep him off the point. Dallas have got to run to the contest. We've not seen this yard. Moscow and the kills are there. That should be it. Florida Mutineers.
An unconventional, an unorthodox way of winning a hard point, but it's counting. 2.30 will get them the victory as the game clock runs down. And Chance, I mean, today's been wicked. Today has been, like, we've had it all today, man. This is great. It is taking map number one. Who saw that coming? I certainly did not. And I will say that has got to be ridiculously frustrating for the Dallas Empire because they had a couple of hills, a couple of opportunities where they just dropped the ball. I mean, he gets shots, he gets double streaked out. They had a couple spawns where they just get beaten. And even Havoc, like I think like at the start of the game was slaying out, was like double positive, things were looking great. Even when he started to slow down, he was still making those annoying plays, right? I'm thinking of where he goes to get those fountain spawns the second time around to get those flips. There's a lot of annoying things that I think for Dallas Empire just dropped the ball and trying to manage where these players were coming from. So a couple of mistakes they get punished. I'm thinking about the, the P1 where they go four down and flip the spawns. Moments they'd like to take back with. On the flip side, you deal with shots, you get in the streets, you deal with all that. Neptune gets streaked out. Awakening and Sky start to get hot towards the end and even just have the more awareness than I did to play off the game clock towards the end. Hell of a game number one for Florida. We are going to see a replay of those crazy final few moments. And again, I mean, it just comes down to the amount of time on the contest. Both teams doing a really good job of keeping each other off the hill. The game clock just started to evaporate. Again, we saw Havoc do a wonderful bit of work here by Back Pillar. Again, keeping the players off that point for the time being. That would have been huge. Dallas really had a massive mountain to climb there after what was an incredible turnaround from Florida and Chance. We don't often see the game clock come into effect in these hard points. We've had a few there on Garrison many, many weeks ago. I think during stage one even. Uh, but there we go, mate. What an incredibly exciting map so far. And Chance, it all sort of fell apart for Dallas towards the end. I mean, I think they had, what, maybe 160 to 100 point lead at a certain point, and Florida just completely takes over. E even the streak usage they had was on point, but hey, the bounce back kind of game for the series Florida needs, they absolutely deliver. What a way to start the series. What a way to start the series. Map number one done. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and upon our return, it's Search and Destroy on Express. Dallas with a fine form recently, and they tie up the series. Find out after this. The Call of Duty League is presented by Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The US Army, what's your warrior? The new Code Battle Dock Pack is free for military service members and veterans, courtesy of USAA. Scan the QR code or visit callofdutyleague.com forward slash USAA to redeem. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. The Dallas Empire Home Series continues to roll as they take on the mutineers here. We've got ourselves an Express, Search and Destroy. 
coming up after this one. QR code in the corner, friends. Get on that one, get on that one. Very, very cool stuff again for the veterans out there. But we've got ourselves an Express Search Destroy coming up in just a moment. Uh, chance we can talk all day about how exciting that last hard point was. We've got a series on our hands. We really, really do here. Florida with a big surprise win there in the first. Goes to the game clock. Fourth time that has happened out of 191 hard point maps so far in the Call of Duty League. Unbelievable. Quick look at the Dallas Empire stats now since adding Fellow, mate. Is there any fun stuff there you can see? I think the most important thing to focus on is probably just the control overall. I think that's why in the, the keys to victory I was making the point of like they need that strong secondary map because as good as Dallas has been on checkmate, the other two, it's been faltering as of late. I think they're one in four in their past five controls, but Again, it's very early on when the teams Dallas had to play was Toronto. So sometimes these series are just a little bit tough, but I mean, speaking of tough, the hard point was exactly that. They, they dropped the ball a little bit, blew about a, a 60 or 70 point lead, get demolished on the final couple hills. And now Dallas have to bounce back on Express, where admittedly their record isn't terrible. They've had some success, but I think a big reason for their success is Krim occasionally just pops off. I'm thinking of the 11-0 the performance he had, one of the only perfect score lines we've had from this year. but. Outside of that, I mean, Dallas, it's a little bit tricky to have a, a high level of confidence for them. But again, maybe that just highlights how Florida, or how good Florida potentially is. It's been a lot of love for this Florida roster for a long time. And again, it's just that pace being set. It's a smart team. They've got the capability to take a lot of top teams all the way. Let's see if they can keep this one going against Dallas now and express search and destroy. Map number two. You're almost ready to get into this one. A lot of big Wake fans out there, a lot of Neptune fans. Fans happy to see Havoc, the Greasy Gang, back involved in the league. And of course, everyone loves a bit of Skies. And we've actually, I don't remember the last time we saw the uh, Invest in His Game ad, but I'll never forget that one day where we all got to see it 600 times and we all learned the words inside out. And ah, oh, good times here in the Call of Duty League. We're having a good time, that is for sure. We'll see now if Awakening can have a good time against the peppering of shots now that Dallas are laying down over towards that B-bomb site. Yeah, actually, coming through the, the middle as well, this is quite a few players in uh, somewhat of spicy positions. And it's Neptune, I was going to say, the spicy of them all. He just dropped bomb in the hallway. It might not make a difference because Shasi just found the kill based on the full flank and the final two players up are just in the back corner of the map. But this is worst case Woo! scenario to start the round. Skies for the 1v3. Able to find at least the first kill, but now Ilian Fellow potentially going hunting. He is, like, Skies is tweaking, man. He is cracked right now. Great awareness. Again, we can see those players through X-Ray. He's making the reads right now. Oh, that's huge. 1v1. Hello. Oh, what? baby. That's the 1v3. Skies. That was nasty, man. That was nasty. I don't think he should have won that chance. Like, they had that one together and... I mean, Skies has invested in his headset, that is for sure. <laughs> I heard the players mantling up pretty much both times around. And I'm not even kidding when I say this. Probably one of the biggest difference makers, like, across the CDL for, like, search and short performances... It's genuinely just going to be of like playing off the audio cues. I yeah. think there are just certain players or even certain teams that it's a little bit trickier when it's 4v4 and like the comms are flowing, but just not playing it on audio uh, as well as you can because you can hear mantling, obviously, from pretty far away. <laughs> yeah, and the loudest thing in this game is when you pick up the bomb by far. Plenty of good memes out there about that one. But over towards the A bomb site, we go now for the Dallas Empire and it's Awakening and Neptune trying to provide that long distance coverage. Of a gunfight about to take place on the inside of the map, and that's going to be a nice win from Fellow. Gets out. Neptune up and about. This is his playground. Did he see the bomb drop there? That'd be huge. Illy. Oh, oh, oh. Nice kill. 45 seconds remaining now. Bomb recovered. The skies once again. Oh, boy, he gets two of them. I cannot believe he managed to pull that one out. That's going to be another two big kills, and just like that, Fellow's all alone. It's a 1v2. 1v2 and that bomb is down across the map. Fellow has quite the hike ahead of him and Skies almost certainly is going to know. you got two incredible ARs looking over top of where the bomb is going to be, playing together as well. Fellow needs to try to make some magic happen and he's going to get spotted, of course, as he picks up the bomb. We heard it from South Carolina and now he's going to be taking down <laughs> one shot. Nowhere for him to go. Florida with two rounds in a row, both 
off the back of skies. Yeah, you could hear that one from space, and it's basically in the vacuum of space. Sound doesn't travel too good. But we heard that bomb! And Sky's eyes on the back side of the train, set up for victory. Mutineers playing this one like a fiddle so far. Plenty of time to bounce back in this still for Dallas. The Sky's 5-0 and on a bit of a spree right now. And again, streak's not as super fun on Express, but they still will play their role. Here we go. Grim wins the big one. Finally put Skies down. That's going to be the spree come to an end. Mid-map control now. Looking good for Dallas, but Florida making that bomb over towards B. They're electing the, the plant in the 3v4 as well. I'll say Havoc making a, a read over towards the hallways. They have gotten picked apart in both of these hallways every time they try to play in these areas, but now they need to clutch up. Shotzi is going to be the player going on the full flank, and maybe he doesn't need to. Krim picking everybody apart. His second kill in the round, and now if you had that hallway control, you're a little bit stuck inside. Oh, I was going to say Krim, like, he's pissed. He's still trying to find those kills. Defuse, 20 seconds left. Havoc, eyes on it. Got to make a play. Is Neptune able to get an eye on the bomb? It's almost done. Oh, no. There's the defense. Shotzi just in the nick of time. The shot punch was on from Neptune there. They do not have eyes on the bomb. And the defuse comes through. Dallas, a nice round. Stop the spree from Florida getting any further. And shout out to Krim just for finding like that first blood, right? You end up getting the bomb planted, and yes, you get it planted for free, but you have to plant in the safe spot because you have the man disadvantage. You can't afford to get picked. And then, of course, if you plant it in the safe spot, you have to leave the hallway and obviously slide on in just to try to get the kill. So somewhat of a, an impossible situation towards the end unless Dallas makes a mistake, and Dallas did not make a mistake. First round they're able to get, and when well, you go back to Old Faithful, the bully out B strat. Been a while since we've seen one of these. Shot C from up pipe. Nice nade. The ARs now are putting in the work. Bit of a smoke screen there from that Semtex. And Skies slips through it. He does manage to get one. Havoc though in and about the point on tickets. And oh, Skies. Last player left up. The shot punch is there. They managed to take each other down. Another definitive round from the Florida Mutineers. Start to finish. They were winning their trades. They had control. It's 3-1 so far. And this last play from Havoc. I mean, this just goes to show... Communication and the map awareness right now from Mutineer is on point. Just a, an easy retake form as well. E even the kill you're able to get on Krim over towards the, the side of the map uh, by like the glass elevator just makes it much easier down low than Havoc easy reads up top. Just no love on, on any side of the map right there for Dallas Empire. And I think if we've learned anything throughout the, the CDL through this league or even just today from watching Seattle versus FaZe, I mean, it's always going to be hyper competitive on these maps, but you make a, a mistake or two, that's always going to be the difference maker. And we can't forget, it was Skies that was punishing the mistakes early on. Admittedly, though, nearly for the first blood. At least first blood there. Have a very difficult situation to get out of Neptune, though. Gifted a pair. He'll take that happily. It's a 1v2 now. Skies has been Skies in this again. situation before, dude, and he's a happy bunny. A wide spread from Dallas now on the defense. Krim? Uh-oh. Don't do it, Krim. Don't do it. Make it real hard for him. Krim's going to re-engage. Very confident player, obviously. It's going to be Fellow playing safe by the bomb. That's really what you want right now for Dallas. It's one thing for Krim to win the fight, but ultimately the objective lies down in the terminal. Dallas clutch up and nailed that one. Three to two. And Krim just really isn't messing around. He's making sure that they're going to get these wins. And nice little bounce back round because obviously Neptune picks up two. Things can get dicey, but... Fellow there for the trades and no clutches this time. Just to touch on the point before, again, you, you make a mistake or two at this level, that could be the difference maker for a map. And just the fact that Skies has those clutches in the first two rounds, in my mind, might be enough to make the swing, but certainly just means Dallas Empire put themselves in a hole. They tried out the, the Bully B strat last go around to no success, this time going towards A, but the fast flank is in. Havoc already working his way through that back catwalk. Havoc's already on it. Man, he's fast. And here comes the tags. Oh, he can't quite finish the kill. At least gonna stay alive for now. 42 HP left. Havoc's plan. It's caused a bit of a, an uproar, but not enough to really unsettle Dallas, though. They're still making this play work out. Neptune versus Illy. Here we go. Both players have a corner. Neptune, I don't think he's aware of this one. And here comes Krim on the poke. Ooh, Nep. Fancy footwork. Here comes the reach out. And this is about as back and forth as it can quite get, mate. Neither team Keep really willing to promise. concede, man. 
Well, they don't want to concede, but also if they're going for wrap, they haven't seen Havoc in the longest time, so they're trying to work themselves back around the map, but they still have to check every corner because Havoc's still playing an off angle. And they're going to be planting the bomb literally right behind him. He's got no idea. He's about to go, oh, wait, they're on A. He's going to hold the line. Trotsky's going to back on out. Havoc, the assassin, he's still on point. And the rest of Florida have just creeped on through. Fellow's got no idea. All of a sudden, he's surrounded by Floridians. And there's 30 seconds left. They've got full bomb site control. How the hell have the Florida mutineers, nay, the ninjas, how have they managed to take that bomb site? That was wild. Chelsea can do anything he wants there. They literally silently walked in and took control of B. Florida with one of the weirdest rounds of search you're going to see in a while. And Havoc, again, is just a problem on the map to deal with. Like a ghost in the night, you just never know where he's going to be. And honestly, the decision-making for him to not immediately chow the guy off a bomb and potentially throw away his life, at first it seemed risky, but it ends up paying off beautifully, right? You just get complete control. You're here with all of your friends. Uh, a mistake-free round, and I'd say just shouts to Havoc just for making that read, just to stay patient. And then the swarm towards the end. And of course, I think Skies is on a four spear right now. Found a first blood, something like that. So there's a lot of things going right for the team in this moment. Uh, as Florida has that four to two lead. What a huge amount of fun <laughs> that round was. A magnificent bit of patience. Will we see it again? Prim once again Prim wins. Again. <laughs> he wins those fights. Oh, Jesus. Havoc. Okay. <laughs> Did he just... Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll take it. That's a, that's a nice kill. Evens things up. Big wake of Neptune now, clearing out the B bomb site as best they can. Havoc's got the top stairs covered, so now you know where the remaining members of Dallas Empire are coming from, but they still think something might be up at A. Both teams being pensive enough. Krim, down by rails still. Here comes the bomb plant. Neptune's going to get it down. Will they plant it in a position now that they're easier to... Catch it on the diffusing and plant it for terminal side. Okay, so they're going to hold this one from low. You've got Havoc still making his way around the map, just trying to be slow and annoying. Just planting out information. Will not be dying in this situation. It's just going to be a pain in the ass. I'd, I'd take it all back. He's dead. 25 on the clock. Hello finds a big one. Awakening. Oh my god. I'm surprised Havoc died, Chance. I thought he's throwing shoulders here. Don't let Krim down. Instead, the rest of the squad gets smoked. That's a great round out of Dallas. Great round indeed. Fella picks up too. But again, we talked about it right before the map started. Crim 6 is by far the biggest reason why Dallas has any success on, on this map at all. Just plays the gunfight so well. You, you talk about the performance Skies is having. Well, anytime he gets first blooded, it's at the hand of Crim 6. Even the read on the gunfight towards the end on point. But then Fellow, and I think it was Shots, he stuck in the corner. The teamwork on point for the other two. But... In my mind, it's just Krim ha having his way in these like one on one engagements. Might only be seven and five, but again, all of the kills he is getting are the, the deciders for the rounds. And even still, he's going to need a, a couple more big ones as Empire's still down four to three. Here we go. One more round to tie things up, and it's an aggressive hit in towards B. Tune the top reads. Cuts Illy to pieces. Now trying to check every possible angle he can. No ankles, no nothing. Flash lands, checks him out. Shots, he's now making his way forward. Fellow trying to buy some space down in the lower corridors. Shots, he's in. Managed to get into the soft spots. And he is causing problems right now. Oh my word, big 1v1 win. Neptune on the bomb. Krim's going to get it. 1v2 situation. Can Krim get alive? He does. He gets away. He messed up his slide and everything. 1v2. <laughs> Old man movement. Old man movement. <laughs> But now, oh boy, here they come. Awakening goes down first. Tavik's going to get the immediate trade. Florida. That point. That was, see, that was like the opposite, man. That wasn't a good round. That was an ugly round for both teams, but we had fun. So that is map point for Florida. Trade's on point. And a good double chow coming towards the end as well, just to make sure you don't give Krim any opportunities. The, the movement might be old on occasion, but his gun skill uh, and certainly map awareness, hyper and, and ever present. Grim doing what he can, but everyone else seemingly to, to struggle to find kills. Even Shasi, when he's like trying to put players on skates, it seems like he's impossible to kill. Well, Neptune is just amongst his people. This is what he likes to do. The gunfights he likes to have. And all for Florida, back on the attack to the A site they go. Illy thinking about a potential flash flank, and maybe oh. he can find an open. Oh, Neptune again. Illy, though, close range, managed to take down Big Wake. That's big. 
Oh, the train's about to come a dangerous place. Here comes that player on the hunt. It's going to be Skies trying to get him. Neptune's going to push the front. Illy's a dead man. There's no way he gets out of this. 2v3. Ian is. Group up for a moment. They've got a bomb site control. Give or take those two players. Oh, wait a minute. And it's a long range shot from Skies. He finds another one. Oh, Skies. Oh, he's going to try to bring this back. So 1v3. And the wall bang comes through in Florida. Oh, they take the search. And that is 2-0 in the series chance. Damn, Express was hot. I thought Dallas would look much better on Moscow. I thought they would look a lot better on Express. This is an absolute banger so far. Florida with the lead. I, I just can't help but think, man. They make the roster change, and obviously everyone uh, around is going to be confused by it. And with every passing map, I'm becoming more and more confused by the decision. Dallas Empire struggling right now. The lead they had on Moscow got blown out of the water. And despite a couple decent rounds from Crim6 coming through, just not a lot of success across the board. Florida seemingly doing whatever they want. Skies obviously with 11 kills, got to give him the shout, but he certainly had the, the front half of the game towards the back half. Everyone else started making plays, Neptune included, the walking two-piece. Not actually, it's a terrible nickname, but he played pretty well. AMC's the walking two-piece. Uh, we're going to have a look at our US Army tactical play in a moment. It's going to be that crazy round from Florida, round six. This was the wild one. This was the, uh, the, the Havoc's already on bomb site, having a good time. The rest of the squad silently creeps in. And man, this was, uh, this was a wild one. Keep an eye on that minimap chance. This was, this was one hell of a round. Florida coming up big here. And I just can't believe Havoc, one, didn't hear this player walk up right behind him. And then two, even go for the challenger, or maybe he hears them but wants to wait for his team. I don't know what the comms were like in the situation, but either way, the way it plays out is that poor player, I think is what fellow, just caught him between the entire team of Florida out of nowhere, which you would never expect, and, well, good enough to get the job done. So credit for Skies for the first blood. Credit to the remaining cast as well to make sure you have all the kills. And then, of course, at this point, Shotzi, well, just in La La Land. Your teammates don't win any of the gunfights. There is not a play he is going to be able to make. And that is just one of many rounds where Florida just able to get a comfortable win. A wonderful win there from Florida in that round. And in the search, here we go. We're up two to nothing so far in this series. A surprise? Yes. Who knew it coming? It might be the Florida fans. I don't know. But I didn't see this coming. This is a very exciting one nonetheless. We are going to go to a quick commercial break. And upon our return, we're going to checkmate control. This is game three of this series. This is match point for Florida. Find out what happens after this break. Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is presented by USAA Insurance, 
We offer insurance that's made for the military community to help them easily protect what they've worked hard for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. The Dallas Empire home series keeps on rolling. But for Dallas Empire, we need them to start getting the ball rolling because right now, Florida are looking down the barrel of the sweep over the top of our current reigning world champions. Here's Group A standing so far. Toronto Ultra are tippity top the mountain of Group A with that perfect 4-0 record, only dropping one map so far. But again, a spicy middle of the pack there again as we look towards Mutineers trying to tie things up 2-2. Two to two. And for Empire, trying to go 3-1, man. That's what they want right now. They want to get out of that naughty 2-2 two -two split because if Florida win it and Empire lose this one, obviously, there's going to be a real messy mix-up right there in the middle of the standings chance. Group A, Group B, whichever one you're in, it's a a gauntlet there's no doubt about it i mean i was just gonna say even for this next map if florida gets the win you're staring down the barrel of a three-way tie two to two empire then would have to play minnesota potentially for a spot in winners or maybe top two it depends on how the tiebreakers uh, shake out but even still something you mentioned before for the previous series because of how close it's going to be all of these maps matter if you're going to lose it better be in a game five because those two maps when you get in a loss at least help you out for the tiebreaker situations worst case scenario is you get 3-0 if you get 3 0 and end up in any sort of tie with that team, two way, three way, whatever it's going to be, that is incredibly problematic. So, Dallas Empire, talk about an important moment for these guys. Pressure's on now, uh, as well as the match they have against Minnesota, whether or not they get the win here today. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, again, this is the late stages of the road to stage three's major. The road is getting, uh, it was, the beginning is very long and winding. Right now, it's more like a highway to hell for a few of these teams, but like, gosh, darn it, here we go. Into our next map. Trickmate Control, coming up here. A crescendo here in the series for you music fans, maybe. Oh, it's a little interlude, another chorus, who knows. Trickmate Control, though, chance again for both squads. It should be a fun one. We have seen fireworks on this map, the 2021 season so far, and and the way today shaping up, like, I don't know, friends, get your clips ready. I'll see you on Reddit. That's what I'm saying. The biggest thing for me, clips aside, is really just looking at the record for the Dallas Empire, right? 5-0, and oh, but admittedly, not with this roster, right? That's throughout the course of the year. This has been the, the pick of the, the flavor, whatever this is going to be. The map three that they love to play. This is the one they get, and obviously it's the one that they're going to need in Florida they certainly know that they're going to be playing with fire. A lot of trust in this team to get the job done and figure out how to win this round. Shanti, again, one of the, the first players on the map to strike. Trying to open things up for Dallas on defense, of all things. I mean, Shotzi is... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's disgusting. Like, the snap... Let's go back to the start of that round. Watch the snap he made on the player trying to come in through wing. Like, he was almost there, but still... Mutineers have done the hard work. They get themselves that first segment at a very, very nearly done. It's a solo cap right now. Big Wake doing the heaviest of lifting at this point in time. Two kills to his name as well. Is the rest of the team now trying to make their way over? Neptune's going to try to poke towards Shotzi and second tick at A complete. The segments are falling. There's only one left. And Crim's not going to be enough to stop it alone. And that's that, friends. Goodbye, A. Hello to two minutes on the clock to work with for Florida. And that is a very unpressured capture as well, right? I mean, Awakening just gets to chill around the street, knows exactly where to look, and congrats, he's able to get the artillery. If there's any player, I'm just honestly expecting to get the cruise missile. It's him, and he is shooting missiles, let alone having the actual explosive in the back pocket. Now he's in the power position off the side, just trying to slow these players down. <laughs> just keep in mind, this entire time, Skies has been trying to get that progress on B. Yeah, it's, it's slow and steady. They're almost there to that first segment completion. Have it. Oh, that's a big win. Billy, Four oh down. my God, he goes down as well. Four down. What do we say, friends? Stack the point. Here we go. Get them bodies onto the zone. That should be a fast capture. Second segment almost done. Shotzi almost there to get the contest. Doesn't let it happen, but it's big wake baby in the kill feed. Here he goes. Full streaks. The second segment gone. The third on the horizon. You can kiss it goodbye and you can say hello to that first round win for the Mutineers. Holy dooly. 
Right, so what are we working with? No hook, other team gets a nuke. I don't even know what the little turn of phrase is going to be, but that is just a <laughs> clinical round. Even for the lack of stacking the point towards the end, like Havoc, I guess, just got bored, and he's like, yo, guys, I'm going to go A Street, even though no one from Dallas was coming from that direction. In spite of that, they were just getting all the kills from down low, from A Street, Awakening Neptune, pick your poison. Uh, I mean, that is about as easy of a round on offense you're going to see on this map, and... I mean, hell, just looking at it, uh, Awakening has 10 objectives, only 9 kills. you love to see it if you're a Florida fan. Oh, that's that big wake, man. That's just what he does. <laughs> that's just what he does. We're all excited about the wrong things right now. It's Florida. Only at the helm here on Checkmate. Oh Awakening Havoc. The crossfire is there. Fellow's tagged. Here comes the cleanup crew. Oh, what a win. Fellow from... A very dire situation, managing to take one with him. Krim, toe to toe with Skies at great range. What an angle that is. Skies. Got the protractor out for that angle. Trying to find a few more now. Less than a minute remaining. Dallas Empire being forced back. Skies moves another nice one. Oh my god, the crossfire's there. Awake, he's got shots. These guys are just going to dip out. He's like, yeah, bro, I'm going to force Brim. Well, sweet. We've got one player in top plane. Neptune's all going to go down. Dallas with a bit of a sign of life here. Really wrong gunfight. He, not the one he wants. Now he's got the, the 74 U back out. He's called to go, but... And the rest of the team, they are battling tooth and nail to retain some degree of control here, Chance. 30 seconds left. Well, Shotzi doing his best job of just trying to open up the map for his teammates, right? Roaming around the plane to get that control. You start to open up some lanes. And, well, finds the pick on Awakening and a couple kills for Dallas. Starting to go their way. There's the third for him. Pick a point and stack it. Krim and Shotzi looking for kills while their teammates are doing the job on the other side of the map. Krim, aware of the spawns, knows they're coming through radio, and it's the double challenge that's going to shut him down. So Florida doing a nice job of at least clearing out the bottom side of the map, but obviously for Dallas, they get what they want, they get that eight point secured. A little too late, though, I think, with the cruise missile here from Awakening, but still, he should be able to get fellow. There it is. That little curve, the only kill streak that can really make a dent on the A zone here on this map. Now it all falls down to B. So over a minute to work with now for Dallas Empire. 18 to 15, life lead for them. Awakening still has the artillery to defend the B site, and that's going to be great. But again, it's really got to come down to whether he needs it or not. Slow and steady. Meanwhile, on the A side of the map, that's where the battle's raging. Awakening, nice transition. One, two, the third. Krim's going to get him. Now Krim, though, from the back lines. Big damage dealt. Going to dip on out, reload. Allow the rest of the team to come forward. But Skies, oh, the fadeaway on a fellow. <laughs> oh, God. Neptune wins his as well. It looks like all four down. Dallas Empire, 30 seconds remaining. They've got to fight forward. And this is premium territory for the Mutineers. And this is just the, the AR players on Florida just feasting uh, on Dallas Empire right now. They're just having a grand old time. The shots as crisp and clean as ever. And, well, the map gets opened up, and now you got Havoc and Neptune causing problems. But Fellow winning his ones, but Skies just immediately there for the trades. And keep in mind, Havoc, the nuisance in the base, slowing these players down. Six seconds left on the clock, and, well, Dallas... Okay. One good attempt at this, and Shotzi trying to be the open. Oh, it, it may not be a good attempt, but Shotzi's going to make something special out of it. Six HP. Here comes the artillery from Big Wave. Commits in. Three seconds remaining on the clock. Shotzi. Oh my god, he finds another kill. Can Fellow win this against Havoc? This is big. Back on the point. No, they get the trades. Florida once again. Another big round. It was very, very close in the end there, but just that nade that landed managed to kill Fellow. Doesn't let him get back onto the point to stop the clock. And once again, it's Skies and Big Wake going absolutely humongous here on Checkmate. I mean, the plays they had even just at the start of this round, right, where Skies is working like Outer A Street. You see him like originally just like pinning down Crim6 on the back shark fin. Then uh, Skies picks up like a kill on Fellow he probably shouldn't have got. And then you're like, oh, he's one shot. Clearly he's going to die. And then Awaking from God knows where. Finds two kills in the feed. I mean, he has 17. Him and Skies are running the show. Maybe Awakening deserves a little bit more of that credit <laughs> just for a fairly ridiculous stat line. But even still, two rounds up and Awakening, one of the quicker shoulders just for the information. And that's a gunfight. I just, I'm expecting him to win all of these. The fact that he gets traded, honestly, is kind of impressive for Shotzi. It's a big win, though. Skies back over to the A zone we go. A little bit of love towards both zones so far. We're going to see... Dallas Empire's little gold arrows now make their way towards A. They lost A fast on the first defensive round. And Skies, ooh, nice tags. Not enough to get Illy, though. He's real hurt. 
Awakening is going to now bring his Krig to the fight. And this is just a kill box. Like, get off the zone. It's the most unsafe place on the map right now. Between the Semtexes and the shots there. The fellow, whew, finally, finally wins the fights. Creating some space now for Empire to work with. Keep in mind, though, you just have Neptune completely behind enemy lines. If you start to find any of these kills, he can be the, the thorn in your side. And right now, just giving his team the information, wins his first one. And there's somewhat of the opening. Not for Dallas Empire. I was going to say, maybe worry about the flank, but they're not. They're actually just pouring the pressure on the flip side of things, and Neptune trying to help his teammates out. Now just oh. giving up the map control that he had to go hunting in the spawn because Dallas still alive in their base. Shotzi still causing problems. Yeah, Dallas are like, we go for the kill. We go for the murder. What the hell were those hip fires? All right. Oh, well, we're back A on the normal point. normal 74 U kill. <laughs> very, very normal performance there from Neptune. Does get on the point for a moment, but you're going to clean him up. There's 15 seconds remaining now. Florida has got a little bit of a jog to do. You see there's two players on the A zone on the tight defense from Dallas. They are not letting anything get through, but Havoc. The drop to Krim. The other side of the map, shots he's now getting involved. Guys, oh, loses out to Krim once again. Big stuff. Oh, but the contest. Not for three seconds. Dallas clutch it up. We're going to see another round here on Checkmate. Still alive. Still with fight in them. I mean, maybe this is one of the better opportunities we get to see of exactly what this new Dallas Empire is made of, right? Because I know people have memes ready and waiting to go, but obviously there will be growing pains and they find themselves down 2-0 in map count. They were 2-0 down in the control rounds as well. But they fought back at least so far, but obviously this is a, an uphill battle for them. Now they got to get this win on offense, but... Maybe if a player like Krim starts to step it up just a little bit, same as Illy, man, 9 and 16. Try to get a little bit of life, try to get these guns hot, but Havoc already causing problems on the flank. Yeah, he's deep. He's gone all the way now. He's like past two. Big way continues to just, just reap his way. So the fields of Dallas Empire right now, man. He's just arming him. Havoc's still alive. Back here, just being annoying. Really, really annoying. Genuinely. A pain in the ass. Thankfully, Shotzi knows what to do with that. Takes care of it. Wait, goes down to Willie. Nice job. Getting himself involved. Forward he goes into the guns of Sky. Sky's up next. Let's take care of Crimp 2. Sky! Holy moly! It's a three from Sky. That's five in a row. And that's big. That's a lot of time spent pushing forward. Now you got just over 30 seconds remaining. Dallas have got to get a move on. Illy surging forward. Big win on the Sky. That was a huge win, actually. And now. Can he get any more out of this? Oh, Illy! Oh my god, he gets the second! Now you've got Dallas on the A zone. They stop the clock. Double chow comes through though, just to slow him down and talk about slowing players down. Awakening, just gonna call him that artillery. Makes the read, just the reaction time to know where the player is gonna be coming through and awakening gets the two piece because of course he does. You finally get some map control for Dallas Empire to push up, you get bombed and gun down along your way. Now, Illy, well, needs oh. to go big, but just jumps into a double chow. Oh. Looks like Florida, all the map control in no. the world, looking to be a devastating 3-0. Oh, it's a devastating 3-0. The final moments is just the members of Florida finding these kills, and that is that. Florida Mutineers sweep Dallas Empire in an emphatic fashion. Oh my word, what have we just witnessed? Florida have certainly come to play. The Pickhams are all over the place. And these final kills, yeah, it was amazing for Millie, but man, it was just devastating. 3-0, that's a very, very surprising result. There is no doubt about it, but for Florida Mutineers, congratulations, lads. What a sweep that was. Uh, and they have truly shaken up the, the standings as well in this group. Keep in mind, that is now going to be a three-way tie between, what, uh, these two teams and then Minnesota as well, all tied up at 2-2. Two to two. I'm just going to say, though, I, I mean, obviously, if you drop a player like Hoop, there are absolutely going to be growing pains. You're not expecting to have that, like, immediate superstar success where you start running over teams. But, I mean, they just didn't even look that great. Like, they just looked flat from start to finish. This is going to be a potential tough series the Dallas Empire are going to have to bounce back from. And of course, on the flip side, well, Florida, they needed a big win here. They absolutely got it. They're trying to go from, what was it, fourth or fifth right now in their standings to jump towards that winner's bracket for what would, or for these guys, would be the first time of the year they could start a major from a, a positive place rather than being down. So 
making the best of the opportunity and even looking at the stats. I, I mean, shots he was trying, even fellow at least in the damage category was there, but just not quite it overall as the, the duo of the AR, Skies and Awaking, just had a, a feast of a game number three. And boys, be eating good right now. We're going to have a look at our scuff play of the game. It's going to be from the first round, and it was a fun one. We saw Skies going absolutely holy crazy wild there. I mean, the man had a lot of plays here. Uh, this is from the Search and Destroy. Um, and yeah, man, just crazy, dude. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. This is from the... As I say, from the search, not from the control that threw me for a moment. I was like, express control? I'd love to see it. Who knows, mate? But yeah, this was just nonstop. This was that 1v3 situation he had. And Charles, again, the gun skill right now. I think it was after this moment, man. Like, Skies was just the man. Like, from him, from this map forward, he went huge on the control game as well. Big fan of his work. And even for the work right here, do they even shoot at him after this moment, right? Like, it's a 2v1. You get the information. And obviously, they don't know they have the bomb down, but you can still play together. And then he just finds a free pick. No one shoots back. Then the next player not there for the instant challenge. And by the time you try, you mantle. You feed him the information, and at least he's shot back. But Skies, just to kick things off with a 1v3. I mean, Havoc maybe reacted more than he did. Sky's just cool, calm, and collected, but hell of a job he had in the game number two. And, of course, the, the game number three, just to polish him off towards the end. Just AR dominance from start to finish. Beautiful stuff. We're going to have a look at the road to the major now, the Florida route they're taking to get to this point in time. And it's wild to think, man. I mean, they have had some funky, mixed results. You go down 3-0 to Ultra, relatively expected. The 3-1 win over Rocker, wild. You lose 3-1 to Paris, and then you 3-0 the Dallas Empire. Get it together, Florida. I understand that there's a lot of back and forth, and you're trying to work things out, but you're changing like the weather over here. Who knows what's going to happen against the Los Angeles Gorillas coming up later, but man, alive, Florida. They have been keeping their fans on the edge of their seat this stage so far, mate. Crazy stuff. And Miles, keep in mind, like, I'm not a scientist or certainly not a financial advisor, but if Florida got that win over the Minnesota Rocker and beat Empire, that's the three-way tie right there. So obviously Florida just walks away with that one. So I think that might mean for tomorrow's matches, and it might depend on what happens with Paris Legion and Gorillas, but it might very well be a situation. But Dallas versus Minnesota, winner gets to the winner's bracket, losers starts from the bottom. There we go. Have a look at the Dallas Empire Stage 3 road to the Major now. Of course, they take down Paris. It was a loss to Ultra. They just seem to be throwing 3 0 almost everyone so far, but that was a real surprise. Dallas, they will have an exciting matchup against Minnesota Rocker. Boy, when you saw that last Stage 2, incredibly exciting series they had against one another. Drama abound. We'll see if anyone from Rocker can stick each other in those crucial search and destroy moments yet again. Certainly keeping everyone excited here in the Call of Duty League chance, but again, for the Dallas Empire road to the Major, are you faring for them, mate? I mean, any, any wild bits and pieces there you want to talk about? I, I would just say generically, it's incredibly tough to make predictions just uh, across the board for this entire year. Even trying to predict, like, admittedly, Dallas obviously looked flat today. They could very well bounce back against Minnesota and just have a lights-out performance. So it's tough to know what exactly you're going to get, but obviously you're Minnesota. I I'd be rubbing my hands together and be like, let me play <laughs> Dallas as soon as possible. That's the kind of energy I, I want them to have when they go into that series. Uh, I'm sure Minnesota is absolutely looking forward to that match. And they should be indeed. Well, we're going to take a look at the standings so far after that match result. And it's getting spicy, man. We talked about that tie. You didn't want to see it there in Group A. Toronto Ultra laughing from atop of their tower as they look down upon everyone battling for these scraps and morsels and map counts. Two, two, split. It's a three-way tie. LAG and Paris Legion sitting there tied at the bottom as well. But that two-way tie, man, three-way tie, sorry, that is nuts, dude. Like, that is going to get real crazy. Again, this is to decide winner's bracket placements. The same for Group Bravo as well. A three-way tie for first. All of this will change. But for Group A, that is a spicy win indeed. Two, two across the board. And the fact that this has played out to, like, literally you're going to get the Dallas Empire versus Minnesota Rocker, I think potentially for top three. I'm sure the analysts are going to know better than me. But even on the flip side, it almost works out perfectly that Optic are playing against FaZe and Optic, like, needs to get that win to force the tiebreakers. That might be one of those series where, like, Optic has to win either 3-0 or 3-1. It's going to be wild, but the fact that it shaped off and worked out that perfectly for Stage 3, you'll love to see it as we go into these final two days. Stage 3, man. I'll say it. I've said it before, tweeted it, and I'll say it again. Stage three has been lights out. The most ridiculous stage you've had so far. Stage four, who knows? Face tattoos, shaving the beard, chance with a real mullet. God knows what's going to come up. It could be insane. Absolutely we'll not. See <laughs> what? 
We'll see how we go. That was Florida's fourth sweep this season. And against the Dallas Empire, no less. We're almost getting ready to throw to our break now, where, of course, we'll be talking to the man who invests in his game. It's Skies for our Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. We love the man, and he had a fantastic series. We'll be back with our Game Fuel Victory Spotlight, talking to Skies right after this break. The Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. The Call of Duty League is presented by Zenny, the official eyewear for the CDL. Armor your eyes with Zenny Block's blue light protection glasses by visiting zenny.com forward slash gaming. Hello everybody and welcome to our Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Joining me, I have the unbelievable AR of the Florida Mutineers. I've got Skies joining me here. i got to ask you, man, first and foremost, what does this win mean to you guys right now against Empire heading into our next major? Uh, this win's obviously like a huge win for us because it gives us like a momentum and I think that our team's like heavy momentum based and it'll just help us get that step forward of finding our consistencies and... Whenever and, and we're we're like right on the verge of the A spot with LAG, so it's gonna be a really important match for us the next one because we play them and then we can just take their spot. And yeah, it's just all that match is just all about momentum. Hundred percent, mate. You guys were frying. You guys were cooking it out there. It's unbelievable. Some of the stuff I was screaming in the green. Oh no, I was different was, today. I don't know. You and yeah, speaking of you, Skies, you were different today. And and honestly, last season you were considered one of the most consistent <clears throat> ARs in the game. You and you're definitely showing that at the moment. But I I think the consistency part is what we're lacking this season. What do you think has been the main difference for you in this game compared to last season on an individual standpoint? Uh last year it was like more of a faster pace and like this year it's it's way it's more slow and it's like more of adapting to the slower play style and then just scrims compared to like actual matches are completely different as well people play so much faster in scrims and you should, it's just a matter of me adapting and playing slower in matches i feel you but i tell you what keep doing what you're doing today it was ridiculous man absolutely ridiculous last question Appreciate and uh, nameless nameless needs to know this in particular what is it like teaming with big weight because when we interview him we don't get a lot of personality out of him i want to know like does he get hype what's he like as a teammate on comms well honestly He's like a silent assassin, but like he has his moments where he gets hyped. But like, I don't know. Like, I, I never know what I'm getting out of him because like he, I know he gets too guaranteed, but like he just pop a random four piece out of nowhere. Like, I'm just so used to the guy, and I just love teaming with this kid. I love it. He's like Ice Man, absolutely no expression, but we we love him all the same. Skies, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much for joining me, and best of luck. Yeah, no problem. Going Thank forward in this stage. 
<laughs> awesome stuff. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to Skies. But I tell you what, things aren't over yet here in the Call of Duty League. We've still got plenty more to break down on the desk. We're going to head to a quick break right now. But when we come back, it's myself and Nameless talking about all of the action we've seen today. Well, day two of the Dallas Home Series is just about done and dusted. We've got the beautiful visuals of downtown Dallas for you guys. And that's where we are right now. We're in the downtown Dallas HQ of the Call of Duty League, and I'm with my pal, Nameless. And look at these results, baby. They are screaming some serious dubs on the board presented by the US Army. We got Surge versus Atlanta phase first today, and Atlanta were bouncing back in a big way against Surge. Surge just couldn't quite close that one out. Three to one was the final score. And then Empire versus Florida Mutineers, and boy, Florida Mutineers, they had non-stick pans in their pockets because, my God, were they frying. Unbelievable stuff from the Mutineers against Dallas. I mean, I, I think, I feel like with the Mutineers right now, Nameless, it's so hard to really predict what they're gonna do because I feel like we're seeing a different team almost every single time they have a new series. I know in particular, you really liked the way that their hard point was looking there. Uh, talk me through what you really saw from them. Yeah, it looked great. Uh, honestly, all three maps look fantastic and uh, decided to pick some analysis tape from map number one because they had an amazing break on P3. You're gonna see them push up through elbow and also from the front, and they get control and they get a majority of this time that happened a couple seconds prior to what you're seeing right now. They get all this time and then they rotate over towards P4 where they hold bank, they get the kills and it's super interesting. They just let the time, you know, go all the way out to zero, to the clock at zero. So they don't let Empire get inside of the hill. And even despite Fellow getting a big two piece, they're able to close it out. You see Neptune picking up the streaks here. They know that the Empire players are gonna be trying to flood through front. They use those because it's the very end of the game and they push Empire all the way out, spawn them super Super deep while they're actively rotating over towards the next hill so they're just getting it done right here and this is something that we haven't seen mutineers doing this teamwork that we're seeing out of them is is phenomenal on that break where they had on p3 neptune and havoc both got a kill simultaneously and then you saw awakening in skies also also push in the front and get two other kills so they killed all four at the same time the very end here this is just a trade battle back and forth and mutineers have the superior positioning there's really not much that empire can do even the player that gets through gold he can't really do much because the player that that's inside the hill, which is Skies, gets that information on him and plays his life as he should, lays down here, puts some more shots down onto the street, but they have spawn. So there's nothing that Empire can really do here besides contest. Eventually you're gonna get cleaned up when a team has this bust and these pillars as cover. They do the exact thing that they should. They close out this map and then throughout the rest of the series, like Sky said, they use that momentum to pretty much dominate. Yeah, um, I mean, 100% agree with you there. And I think 
it, it kind of showed throughout the whole series that that is something that they're working on teamwork um, trying to get that consistency is so important right now you just look at the stats for mutineers and you know that it's not consistent so if they can find that groove and find that momentum that skies was talking about i think they have a really good chance of having a great run in the major um on the other hand though empire a little bit of a disaster, to be honest, right now. I know things have been really heated in terms of their roster moves and, and things have been sent on social media, and I'm sure they're having a lot of pressure in terms of that. Yeah. But in terms of their gameplay nameless, where do they go from here? Yeah, I mean, it was a disaster. I don't even know where to begin. There's so many issues that they have to fix right now. I mean, just focusing on that control, uh, they were losing li literally every single trade sequence that they were a part of. It seems like every single player is trying to go Super Saiyan mode. Well, what happens there? You just get slayed. You can't challenge 1v2s and thinking you're going to get away with your life. And the only moments of success that they really had throughout the control were when a player bailed them out with a huge, like, three or four piece. And that, that four piece that Illy got up top playing, they weren't even able to capitalize on that right after it. So back to the drawing board. Go back to your communication. Calm down and game and just relax a little bit and take your time 100 percent, mate back to the drawing board it is and i tell you what though we got one hell of a schedule tomorrow that u.s army have drew up for you guys you know it it's it's bangers guys it's just bangers across that the board all the time absolute banger absolute bangers so we have a big day tomorrow, people. First up, Legion versus Ultra. Toronto are gunning for that 5-0 record, and Paris need to make some moves here. Game for your marquee match, you already know it. It's going to be NYSL taking on the brand new Thieves with a new look team and Hook on board. And then finishing off the day, Gorillas take on Mutineers. We'll see if Mutineers can keep up that momentum, keep up that consistency that they have been talking about. But I'll tell you what, though. Looking at, obviously, our incredible Game Fuel marquee match, we've got to talk mm -hmm. about what we're going to be seeing potentially from Thieves and Hook. Nameless, have you got any ideas of, of what you're looking for when it comes to this game? Yeah, well, I'm curious as to how Hook is going to fit in on this roster. Obviously, that's the match everybody wants to see going up against a very tough New York. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he comes in and is immediately just trying to play for a ton of kills if he, or if he tries to just fit into the mold. And that's what I want to see is Hook fit into the mold of this team. Usually on Hook's teams, there's never really like the, a star AR player who picks up a ton of kills. Well, now he has that in Kenny. So it's going to be weird to see that dynamic because on Hook's teams, it's always the SMGs who are the frymen who are getting all the kills. So now Kenny at the top of this game, he is the slayer for the LA Thieves. How is Hook going to fit into there and sort of be like a role player for the squad? So that's what I'm interested to see tomorrow is their respawn dynamic, bringing Hook and Kenny and seeing if they have that chemistry to be a duo. 100%. I'm also really excited to see how they handle New York's hardpoint because right now NYSL are our top hardpoint team in the league. They have been so well-rounded as of recent and I feel like every single player right now is playing out of their mind, especially after adding Hydra to the mix. Mm -hmm. And I think you talk about, you know, how Hook is going to fit into this roster. Well, I think it's going to be super important he does so straight away if they do want to try and battle with some of the respawns with New York because it's going to be really tough having maybe a makeshift team not a lot of practice i know it is who coming on board and i know they're going to fry in some aspects but you know what i mean in terms of just the clockwork that we might see out of new york especially in hard points it's going to be rough but i do know it's going to be an absolutely epic match and with that being said we've got to talk about someone in particular from the new york subliners and that is clay we've got to wish this guy oh, this man. absolute vet a happy birthday because boy I mean, we love you at the Call of Duty League. We really do, Clay. You're 29 never looks so here. good, man. I've been competing against this guy so for years, man. I'm, I'm so, so happy that he's still going and showing everybody what's up. He's an old man, but he's still killing it. 100% still killing it. Astro Social Soundboard has a lot of birthday tweets on the board. Look, Clay's himself, he's saying, sheesh, 29 today is pretty insane to me, and I think I'm almost 30 years old, but he's still kicking. Absolutely studs wishing him a happy birthday as well. We've got Blast also giving him some love. I think everybody right now is giving, uh, giving Clay lots of love, the love that he deserves. Happy birthday, man. Absolutely incredible stuff. Um, and you go way back with Clay, don't you, mate? You go way back. I, I saw your tweet earlier. I saw you tweet. Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah, we've I saw been, the, uh, old, the old we, days. We teamed together. We competed against each other. I mean, we're going on like a decade now. So it's just awesome to see a guy from like my generation of COD still competing and winning world championships, not just competing. Like he's still dominating. His team's incredible. So special happy birthday to you, Clay. Amazing stuff. Happy birthday, man. Well, Nameless, thank you so much for joining me once again. Uh, have a blast tomorrow on the desk. And folks, YouTube, we will see you tomorrow bright and early. It's going to be an absolutely epic day. We've got tons of matches coming your way. Make sure you get some rest and we'll see you guys tomorrow for day three of the Call of Duty League.
This has been an unbelievable week of Call of Duty. This was just absolutely insane. It just still has me mind blown, man. One of the craziest sequences I've ever seen in my life. It's Wednesday, and it's the start of the major. The LA Thieves have come to play. Oh boy, the Thieves absolutely decimate Paris. There goes Scott, and it will be the Ultra taking down Optic Chicago. Oh, what are you talking about, baby? Ace, a devastating 3-0. Lose this, you go home. Steve, re New York, and keep the Cinderella story alive. The nail biter here in the map four. Faze, yes! Oh, oh baby, a beasy. It is Faze with the victory. Faze will move in to top three, and for Ultra, you still have a chance to battle on. You're not out of it yet. And is gonna get a quick contest. They killed everyone! They killed all the thieves! Toronto Ultra 3 0 in the series. For the thieves, the honeymoon period is over. Drop kick to the dome. Accuracy, though, they line up! They line up for accuracy and he wins it! Are you kidding? Accuracy with the ice! Oh my god! <laughs> the Giants, the Titans, Atlanta phase. Can anyone take down the final boss? It is do or die time. Kleenex, the best what? player in the world. Ultra, they continue on. Oh, oh okay. my gosh. Ultra behind the brakes. Get to a grand final. <laughs> Atlanta phase, once they hit the go button, there is no stopping them. What happened? The greatest underdog going into the tournament. They take the best team in the league the whole way. They truly are ultra as your major two champions, Toronto Ultra.